Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish the energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast, episode number 78. This week we are looking back at Supernova, which we went to last week, which was awesome. The Garrison 7 guys showed off something spectacular. I told you they would. You didn't listen. I told you they would. The Death in Arrow was revealed, supposedly. No, it, it, it it's confirmed. That's the actual death. Ah, sad face. And we have a heap of new trailers dropped between the last podcast and this past to go through. So, yeah. Fun to be had by all. Let's start off with Supernova Recap. So, first things first, I just want to say Garrison 7 has officially adopted Amy. <laughs> it's like, it's a, yep. I dropped her off there to hang out for an hour, you know, sort of like place, like the, the uh, kitty daycare center. And I came back and Scott's like, she's mine now. And I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> you can keep her, I don't care. You didn't even drop me off. That's not the point. I wandered there myself. It's even better. That means I did even less than nothing. Excellent. <laughs> so, and they decided they'd like my photos I was getting done. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, they're really, really good. Really, really friendly. And they showed off their new toy. And there's a couple of photos oh, floating around the line. Amazing. I still think my photo of the look on Chris's face is my favourite of all the photos I took when Chris was riding in the cosplay play. Uh, the cosplay yeah, play. he's just like, ha 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 ha. That just I grabbed that sort of that that snap where he's just got this big ass kitty grin on his face. It, you could sort of read his mind. It's almost like he's saying, "Oh my god, I'm riding in a king tank down a street. How awesome is this?" <laughs> I miss getting a photo of him in the tank. Uh, somebody slept it, in. No, I was on the wrong side of the road. Ah. So yeah. Um... Yeah, they, they closed off that walkway, which really sucked. Like, if that walkway was open, I would have been up there and would have got some pretty awesome photos. Oh, wait, they closed that off? Usually yeah. there are people up there. So, well, last year, we were, oh. that's where we were. We were up there. But yeah, they, yeah. Had, they had so much stuff in that parade. Like, I only uploaded maybe a third of my photos from the parade. Oh, no, it looked massive from everything else I've seen. Yeah, for those listening, I didn't go. Yeah. This is the first supernova Stuart has missed which, out on in... In 15 years. Friggin' forever. So, which in hindsight, after what I learned yesterday, I'm pissed I didn't go, so, and I'll explain that later. Yeah. So, have you caught up with Jody since since Supernova? Uh this week actually was. Um, uh, actually, I've got. I'm gonna. Fuck it. I'm gonna break the news. Me and Jody are moving in at the end of the month. Oh, nice. Wonder so, when that was gonna happen. Rip, rip my bachelor pad. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, lava lamp. <laughs> Yes, Why I actually goodbye, have a lamp. lamp. Good, 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 mo- goodbye, mother living in the same house as me. Wait. Thank God. <laughs> so where are you moving? I'm not moving. Mum's moving out. We're staying, we're staying at my place. Okay, so your bachelor pad is just becoming a family pad. Yeah. Is, is it still called a bachelor pad if your mum lives with you? No. Eh, probably not. <laughs> Anyway, not the point. Congratulations, sir. But yeah, no. This... Not sure if we should be congratulating me yet. We'll, we'll see how the f- next few months go, and I may need to kill myself. Oh, no, no, um, I'm kidding. Garrison 7 is looking for volunteer, um, extras at the it. moment. Yeah. Well, say, if they need a Jedi. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get there, Amy. We'll get there. So, yeah. Um... No, no, um, I'll be seeing Jodie this week, so hopefully she'll bring whatever you have planned for me over. <laughs> Just still worried about <laughs> <laughs> so those who don't know when I was at Supernova I found something that I thought Stuart would really really like so I is went out a prop? Of... is it like a prop from the set <laughs> so I went out of my way to make Someone sure that, that he got something so he probably won't like it he should be afraid 
but oh yeah. boy, you'll find out when it happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like my evil laugh. It's one of the few things I do well. Anyway. Yeah, it was actually it was actually bizarre. Like I didn't feel as weird as I thought it would missing Nova. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it, was a, it was a different feeling. It was like, I'm not there, but because everyone was putting photos up, I felt like I was there. So I'm like, eh, it doesn't feel so too bad. Yeah, I guess that works. It was really... F- okay, Friday night. First night waiting in line. Um, oh, they I had... heard bad things about the lines. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so annoyed that I missed out on Aaron Ashmore's signature. Just just had to say it. Is that Aaron Ashmore? <laughs> Who was the Ashmore that was there? Which one of the brothers? Sean. Sean. Uh, Sean. Sean. Yeah. Sean. Br- uh... Except he was, he wasn't allowed to sign anything but the game he played. R- really? Yep. Yeah, he wasn't allowed to sign anything other than Quantum Break, which sucks. So, sorry, uh... all the X Men fans. Pretty much. And yeah. there's Animorphs. People had Animorphs stuff. And, uh... Oh, I forgot he was in Animorphs as well. So yeah. did I. So, yeah. Not that because that feels like forever ago. So uh, no. It- so in first. the lineup, they had to keep us entertained. Oh god! They had the official lightsabers. Um... Oh, out the front, yeah. yeah. So, so there's a lightsaber group um, based oh, out of those Sydney. Guys. Um, yeah, yeah, they're in the Central Coast. Yeah, I actually based... know a lot about. Them. Yeah, and they're um, trained officially by the guy who trained the Jedi how to fight in the the reboot. Uh, the sorry, the prequel Star Wars movies. And so they were going around Nova. He's also the same guy who did the stuff for the originals as well. Yeah. Um, so they were going around Nova in the lines at the beginning, grabbing random people out and entertaining them by giving them really quick, free sort of lessons and things. And guess who had a go? <laughs> Amy. Amy. <Yeah. laughs> the least force sensitive of everyone that's normally on this podcast. <laughs> I think I could take a couple of them. So, then I think my stomach will because I'm extremely unhealthy. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um... No, it's cool to put that I'm the least likely person to do it. <laughs> but you still did anyway. Yeah. Now, you, they have, some awesome, they have well. some awesome stuff down there. So, yeah, so anyway, they're looking for awesome people to sign up for stuff. a Brisbane based or even Sunshine Coast based. Jedi Training School, and it's going to be mm. one weekend, eight hours f- for a day, and it's going to cost about 200 bucks, and that includes lunch, and they go through all of the different sort of poses and fighting styles and stuff like that. They're also selling improved versions of the, I want to say Force Effects, the really high-end lightsabers, um, which they're manufacturing themselves. What's the website that sells the high-end lightsabers, to it? Like Which one? There's like, like a few of them. They're like 450 bucks each. Um, uh, well, there's Saber Forge, there's Ultra Saber, there's Saber Forge. As well. Saber Forge. Um, there's a whole bunch of them that do the yeah. that do those. So they're, they're selling what they're calling um, war ready swords. Because the Saber Forge swords are good, but the electronics in them are known to be fairly crappy. Crap. So, <laughs> so yeah. they've got in contact with someone who used to work in the Australian military. And they're actually. Oh, God. So they managed Ooh, to find the, the one Australian soldier that we have and convinced him to Scott? make them military-grade electronics for, to put inside the lightsabers. So you can drop it off a building and it'll keep working. Right, um, they, wait, they, can I buy one? Oh, wait, I'm going to be in Sydney in June. I might, have, I might have to catch up. Yeah, so they're planning on doing stuff like dropping it off the roof of the Tawong Shopping Centre. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a fall. It's a long way down. Obviously, they would have the landing yeah. zone cordoned off and it would be per- done perfectly yeah. safe, but the <laughs> whole point is... You don't want that dropping on your head. Yeah, because it's like a 10-story drop. Um, but they want to do stuff like that to sort of... Well, it's not to warm, but they set a shopping centre about the same size. Um, they want to do yeah. that to prove how durable this stuff is. And it's going to be... Stupid s- Saber Forge quality, because Saber Forge is known as one of the best lightsabers around. Saber Forge quality but better electronics, and that's what Phonics, I think will set yeah. them apart. And they're also going to be cheaper. Because yeah. they're Australian-made... Well, we, we, 
Yeah, and... we needed something over here. Exactly. Because everything's all US based. So. Exactly. Ouchie but... our wallets. Yeah. They're Australian made, so they're going to be cheaper. It's going to be really, really cool. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm in contact with the guy as soon as I have all the details and what's happening. I'll let you guys know. Um, but that was another thing from Supernova. They told Supernova. you to send pictures. Oh, yeah. They took it over. Um, yeah, those guys are absolutely fantastic. And, yeah, it's effectively... What they said was, you can smash these swords up against a brick wall. Not only will the tube, the blade, not break, but you could spin it around and smash the handle against a brick wall. And it'll still work perfectly fine. Which is fucking impressive. Um, so, anyway. Enough rambling about the awesome lightsabers of awesomeness. Which are awesome. And I'm not getting paid to say that. I just want that for the record. But, seriously, guys. If you're out there and you want me to advertise for you. Just, just send me a lightsaber. I'll, I'll, I'll take one. Stuart will take one. Amy will take a Yoda-sized oh, one. Yeah. Because she's Yoda-sized. So, yeah. <laughs> Not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah. Anyway, in all seriousness, they look like they're going to be really cool. Um, so, what else happened at Nova? That's right. Garrison 7 debuted the S Nova Titan, which is their battle tank slash troop carrier. Okay. What they bought out was actually a skin of it. Yeah, it was, it was... It was it's actually... It's not finished yet. I'm getting there, Amy. I'm not. I'm getting there. It's not finished yet. It's covered in all of. It's covered in a sort of a rudimentary hull. They had less than three weeks to put this in together from a metal frame to what it was. And to be honest, what they got in three weeks was spectacular. They've even got like a making of. This thing is going to be double hulled, resistant to pretty much everything. It's designed to have panels pulled off and put back on at a moment's notice. So that if one of the panels is damaged for whatever reason, it can be replaced in less than five minutes. It's the top patches open up so they can actually get up onto the roof. Amy has photos of Thor up there hammering the shit out of this thing with ha- with with Mjolnir. Mjolnir, 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 Mjolnir. How the hell you say it? And yeah, it it survived quite happily. So, obviously, there has to be at least vibranium and adamantium in the, in the hull of this thing. <laughs> no, but on all seriousness, this thing looks great. It's got a turret on it. It's nowhere near finished, but the finished version is going to look spectacular. And they're currently looking for extras and whatnot. So, Amy, I'll let you take it over here because you are the one doing the sales pitch the other day. Well, okay. They're looking for extras in the... Gold, in Australia, Gold Coast um, area or further, depends on how far you want to travel. They also are having ex-military come in. They're doing for, a boot camp. Like, people, they're doing a boot camp, but they're also having ex-military who has just like finished at uh, Iran and all that, all the different areas yeah. of the war. For, to come in here and actually start learning how to come as a civilian again. Exactly. It's slowly, it's instead sort of, of just throwing them out the deep end. Yeah, and it's sort of giving all the ex-military guys jobs and contracts and helping them adapt their skills they learnt from combat to civilian life, which is really, really good, which is one of the reasons why we love Garrison 7. They're doing stuff that... A lot of people talk about that should be done, but no one ever does anything about. They're doing it. And they're doing it well. So, yeah. Definitely looking forward to more from their camp. So, um, yeah. So, Amy, were you in um, Chris Judge's Sunday panel by any chance? Nope. Nope. So, anyway, he was talking about... It's just the funniest thing in the, in the world happened. Like, seriously, this was great. He was talking about how in the early days of Stargate, with a where they put the emblem on his head, they use a special sort of silica thing and all sorts of stuff. But the chemicals in it burnt the Jafar symbol, scarred it into his head quite heavily. And he was thinking, "Crap, I might have to walk around with this thing for the on my forehead for the rest of forever." And so he used to cover it with hats and stuff when he went out clubbing. And then every now and again, someone would come up to him and go, "Wait, there's a thing on his forehead. Wait." And Todd Chick would come up to him and be like, Wait, are you the guy from Stargate? So it, and he immediately flicked the hat he was wearing off and down behind him onto the stage. 
And he's like, yes, yes I am. And everyone just roars with laughter. Little did he know, when he flicked his hat off, it fell down behind the stage. In between the stage and the psych, which has got like three millimeters gap because he was just wearing a really floppy hat. It just went whoop, straight down there. So he finishes telling the story and he turns around to pick his hat up. And he looks around confused. He looks to his left, it's not there. Looks to his right, not there. Looks under the seat, not there. Looks at us, because we're just dying. Because we knew what happened and he didn't, because he didn't see where it went. He looked at us with this most confused look of, what the hell is going on? <laughs> so he's looking around on the stage for this thing, and then he realised, um, he looked at the back and saw that it had gone down behind the thing, near the stage, and he almost went ass over trying to get his hat out from behind the stage in front of the psych where it says all the, the, the supernova and whatnot. Big bloody background wall thing. <laughs> oh, it, it just derailed the entire thing. He couldn't focus for about five minutes after that. He was just laughing too hard. He was just like, how does that even happen? <sighs> so funny. It's escaping. Exactly. Chris, you're a champion and we love you. We really do. We'll have you any time. Actually, to be honest, we will have you when Amanda Tapping's over, which we'll get to in the news. Just make sure you bring Richard and Michael with you. Just the four of you would be spectacular. Oh my God! Wouldn't that break the inter Wouldn't that break the Australian fan base? Oh, not only would it break the Australian fan base, it would break the Brisbane Convention Centre. Oh, speaking of which, Saturday at Nova, they were at max capacity at eleven thirty. Yeah, it's crazy. There was a line snaking to get in with up to an hour, up to sort of half an hour to an hour wait to get back into the main convention center. At one. There was still a line of people getting in, or substantially smaller at that point, at three. There was an unbroken line from about nine o'clock ish, 8 30 ish, when the line started forming. Through till three o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday. Just let that sink in. In what four years, Gold Coast Supernova has outgrown the only the only place on the Gold Coast big enough for it. Just let that sink is, in. <laughs> but it didn't seem that busy in the lines because I was doing photos and signatures at that time. Everyone gets caught either trying to get in, because as soon as it reaches max capacity, they've got to slow down the, f the inflow um, for fire reasons. And everyone was crammed in around the shops. Very few people made it past the shops. But yeah, the signatures were pretty good. Mind you, I had the VIP tickets, so I was just going straight to the front of all the lines, so it didn't really matter. Speaking of which, Chris oh, Judge... Oh, what I Because I, I had the, the Super Q and had Chris Judge's face on it. And I was talking to him about... Because he knows EJ... So, and I'm sort of annoyed EJ wasn't here because, I, because it was kind of funny and kind of mean to EJ at the same time. And EJ, I'm sorry. You know we love you. I really, I really am sorry. Um, so no, I, 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 no, I'm not. I said to Chris, because um, <laughs> he knows EJ, and I said, um, do you remember EJ? He's like, EJ? It's like EJ from Nobility. It's like, oh, EJ, EJ, how's he going? I said, yeah, he's going good. He told me to tell you he's watching. And Chris was just like, wait, what? <laughs> Immediately started laughing on that. I don't know. Just, I'll, I'll explain the whole thing here. I'm on a podcast with him. Um, I was joking about how I was going to mess with him, uh, mess with you this weekend. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to get, because I know how much you love to prank people. I'm going to get you in on the action. So all you need to do now is to message EJ or call him or something and say, dude, what the hell was that? You sent a crazy Aussie after me? The fuck? And he's like, that is the most funny thing. That's the funniest thing in the world. Then I because expl I was at the front of the line and they, the person that was there couldn't get the machine to work, so I was just sort of talking to him for about for a couple of minutes. And I said to him, um, "Oh, speaking of which, if you, um, I know how much you love sci-fi. It's like, oh yeah, sci-fi is great." I said, "Would you like to be involved in um, one of the things we're working on? Explain the project that me and EJ are working on." And it was like, "That'd be cool." I said, "Okay, now what you do." is you call him, you get really angry about this crazy Aussie guy. And at which point he started smiling and he looks at me and goes, and then just halfway through getting really angry at him when he starts crying, I just spin it 180 degrees and start talking about this thing you're working on, how I want to be involved. Like, yes. He's like, that is the funniest thing in the world. I've got to do that. <laughs> 
So yeah, so wait to hear back from AJ about that. <laughs> Should be fun. AJ will want to kill you. Oh yeah, he will want to kill me, just like Stuart wants to kill me right now, for not telling him what his surprise is. Nah. Nah. It's not, to be honest, it's not that important. It's not that good. Anyway, um, we've wasted about twenty minutes talking about Supernova. Huh. So. We haven't even got far really in it. Sure. So, so Supernova was spectacular. Crowded as hell, but spectac- well, spectacular. And I heard... A they, re- yep, sorry, go Amy. They really need to work on where they're rearranging and putting people. Yeah. Well, and their lights! Lights? <laughs> lights? Yeah. Uh, once each day, the lights turned off. It's oh, the, the lights in the convention centre. Yeah. The, um, the middle zone of the artist alley... Um, oh no! Would, about Not half, artist alley. Uh, well, it's at the halfway point between the the section where they do the the lines for the photos and where the exit is, and the main convention center where all the exhibitors are um, selling all their, lack of a better word, overpriced random crap. They had a seismosaurus there, one of the stands, for two hundred and fifty bucks. No, I'll give you a hundred for it. Maybe not two hundred fifty. They're not that hard to come across. Not the point. Um. <laughs> Slightly sidetracked. Just had to say it. Anyway, the artist alley section, about halfway through Saturday, all the lights went really, really dim. They didn't go off, but they went to about maybe a third. And all the artist guys are looking around are like, um, zomp. And, and when it happened, for whatever reason, the whole area went really, really quiet. Like, you know how noisy the convention yeah. center is? Yeah. It and just, then you just, it just, it just like... hushed. The whole convention center went really quiet. And I'm just looking at the person, because I was talking to one of the guys there, who was selling some really cool Avatar scrolls with all the different forms for the different bending forms. And Oh, nice. And I was just looking at them, and I'm just talking to him, and all the lights get in, and I go, um, zombie apocalypse? Is a zombie apocalypse <laughs> happening? Okay, that's weird. You one would hope not. And about 15 minutes later, all the lights came back up again. And then on <laughs> Sunday, Sunday morning, I think the thing that lost lights then was the... Um, I don't think it was the artist cell, it was one of the other areas lost all lights. Because they're on the PA the- going, don't panic, don't panic, we're going to have the lights back on soon. <laughs> it's like, what the um, hell? It was, it was, um, in the big area, it was near where the, uh, the 105th was. Oh, the, the back um, area near Garrison 7 and the Stormtroopers. Yeah. Yeah. All that big area oh, went out. That would have been fun. It was interesting. It made it easy for me to find the um, lightsabers. <laughs> <laughs> Torch. And considering the Titan had all the blinky lights, it probably would have made it easy to find it. Because yeah, I was over in line for um, what's it called? It's over in line for something. What was I in line for? That might have been when I was in line for Chris on the Sunday morning. Chris when he attacked my... your badge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and. Because, anyway, I was in line for Chris, and I was going to get... I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to get signed, and he saw that I had a... The Super Cube badge had a picture of him on it. He's like, oh, what's that? So I took it off and showed him, and he goes, oh, that's really cool, and then just immediately signed it. There you go, you've got your signature, gave it back to me. Like, okay, whatever. (laughs) So I'm one of the few people that has a signed Super Cube badge with his face on it. It's a relatively unique item. I'm happy about that. I'm I'm thinking of actually getting VIP tickets for Sid Nova. Yeah. At the very least, get Super Cube... Because I can actually afford it. Yay! Because finally, the last of my dad's insurance money finally came in. Yay! And Centrelink wa- Center I... wants it all. Yay! Wait. Ha <laughs> ha Nope. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway. I think it's about time we move on to talk about the death on Supernatural. <sighs> Sorry. Which one? The death on Arrow. Arrow. Death on Arrow. <laughs> say, what, say, what's Death on Supernatural? God damn it. I blame EJ for this. We are talking to EJ before we started this, and he said Supernatural, and my brain has just broken since. Anyway, the point being... The we, Death on Arrow. The Death on Arrow. So, those who have not seen the most recent episode of Arrow, now is your chance to skip forward ten minutes? Ish. And we'll be on to talking about the trailer breakdowns. So, anyway. Oh my god, there's so many trailers. Oh, yeah. Spoiler alert. Moving right along. Um, so, 
Stuart, who died? <laughs> no one we were expecting. <laughs> no one called who we thought was going to die. Yeah. Not what we expected so, at all. So yeah, they decided to kill off Laura Lance. I still think she's going to come back through one of the Flashpoint bullshit time skip thingies. Ah, uh, so you see, here's, here's, well, I know how they're going to bring her back. Oh, God. Uh, Katie Cassidy is going to appear on Flash in Earth 2 as the Earth 2 Black Canary, known as Black Siren. Oh, okay. Black Siren in the... Um, Ha- actually has the um if you watch the anime show how they actually have the canary cry and it actually shows the waves yeah she actually has that on earth too she's a metahuman so she that's her that's her actual ability that's her metahuman ability oh that's pretty cool so i think that's how the, and so i think she's gonna come over to arrow that'd be really flash. cool no 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 she'll go over to arrow and be the new canary yeah. that's how they'll do it from flash yeah, from Flash. So, which means probably another crossover episode in the near future. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. So, yeah. Yeah, that's how I think they're going to do it. Because I saw the announcement um, a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, why would they do that? And then the death is like, that makes so much sense now. Yeah, all of a sudden it makes sense. So, yeah. Well, I wouldn't be the first person plucked from Earth 2 and brought over here. <laughs> Wells. Daughter. Jesse. Speaking of um, Flash, uh, the episode's back this week. Uh, the Flash episode's back this week. Nice. Stop taking fucking breaks. Yeah. Warner Brothers, DC, sure. Fuck. Yeah, you're, you're. That's one of the literally the few things you're good at is the TV shows, and you keep not doing them. They keep. They. I don't know why they keep taking like two week breaks. Oh no. They just try to extend the season. LSD. It's probably LSD. The cool thing is, is um, this is where Zoom comes back. Nice. And like the the team knows who he is now. But uh, Wally learns Barry's secret. Oh. About time. Yeah. And Five Bucks says <laughs> we we still think that the Wally is going to steal some of the Zoomy Majiggery juicy stuff and become the next. Yeah, the Velocity Nine and become Kid Flash. Yeah. My dude is is a little bit too big to be called Kid Flash. It's when's that stop? Teenage Flash? Not... Well, I can't call him Robin. Not so Flash? Not so Flash. <laughs> <laughs> Temporary Flash? Skippy? Yeah. That would be... Uh, 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 I'm <laughs> the, the, way that he gets, the way he gets Skippy. faster is to skip. <laughs> he skips to get to keep up with Flash. Uh, I've <laughs> got to be... I'll be back. Sorry. <laughs> got something. I've got a call I've got to take. What? Well, sorry. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. But, you just... Uh, so, how old's Wally? Um, not sure. It's not very specific. Okay. But he's just very tall. Yeah. So, at the very least... Then again, there's tall kids. At most, he's teenager years. So, I can still do Kid Flash. Yeah. Depending on the definition of kid, of course. So yeah. Could be a brat flash. Brat flash. <laughs> uh, sp- uh, the uh, call, call him the dragster. They just have half the city go. Oh, behave! Just be totally, totally wrong in every way possible. <laughs> it could be worse. It could, um, we still need Batman to come in to have, sorry, yeah, Robin Leg- to have his own TV show. Legends of Tomorrow hints at Batman. So, I'm just curious if Supergirl's going to make a crossover this way to, from where she is to our world. Speaking of Supergirl, I watched this week's episode, it looks real, it was really, really good. Um... Basically, the whole world's been turned into zombies. Okay. So everyone is under the mind control of the evil Kryptonians, except for um, Supergirl. Her sister. Except for Supergirl and um, 
her equivalent of Lex Luthor, whose name I can't remember. That's what I need Stuart for. Stuart is the name guy. He remembers names for me. So, yeah. And Cat Grant, she's also not under the influence of it because of earrings that do a thing and stop the thing. I don't know. But yeah, so even Superman is under the influence of the mind control. Okay, that'd be different. So, you don't actually... You see him coming to help, and then about halfway there, you just see him stop. Like, he comes in, to, he flies in just like the Man of Steel Superman. You sort of see the sonic booms and everything as he approaches. And then you just see yeah. him stop outside the building, too far away to recognise his face. And then he just lands down on the ground with everybody else and just starts walking with everybody else. So, like, oh, that ain't good. That ain't good at all. But it finished with um, Supergirl having to fight her sister to the death. Quote, to the death. So, uh, yeah. Eh, it's not going to be good. Oh, yeah. Especially because of how attached she is to her sister. Oh, exactly. So, anyway, I think it's about time we leave Stuart in the dark and move on to doing the trailer breakdown. Woo! Trailer breakdown. So, I'm going to play the trailer audio. It goes for about 50 seconds and it's the right to choose. So, it's really, really interesting. And so, here it goes. Tony. If someone dies on your watch, you don't give up. Who said we're giving up? We are for not taking responsibility for our actions. This document just shifts the blame. Sorry, Steve, that... That is dangerously arrogant. This is the United Nations we're talking about. It's not the World Security Council. It's not S.H.I.E.L.D. It's not Hydro. No, but it's run by people with agendas, and agendas change. That's good. That's why I'm here. When I realized what my weapons were capable of in the wrong hands, I shut it down and stopped manufacturing. Tony, you chose to do that. If we sign this, we surrender our right to choose. What if this panel sends us somewhere we don't think we should go? What if there's somewhere we need to go and they don't let us? We may not be perfect, but the safest hands are still our own. If we don't do this now, it's going to be done to us later. So, yeah. It's a group of them sitting in a room talking about the Sokovia Accords, of course. So... What, yeah, what you don't hear, what you don't hear is Black Widow's there, um, Vision is there, Scarlet Witch is there. Let me just find another wider shot to see if anyone else is there. War Machine's there, Cap's there, Iron Man's there. You hear them talking, so you hear them sort of discussing it. There's the wider shot. There's no sign of Hawkeye, probably because he's Hawkeye. So yeah. Probably hiding in the vents somewhere. So, but Falcon is there as well. Sorry? He's so. probably hiding in the vent somewhere. <laughs> Who's hiding in the vent? We're talking about the Captain America right to choose clip. Oh, right. So, yeah, and um, I just played it. And I'm just talking about who's there. So you've got Vision, Scarlet Witch, uh, War Machine, Captain America, Falcon, Iron Man, and Black Widow are all in the room together. And they're talking about sort of the effects of this thing. And... To be honest, I'm not exactly so sure which side I'm on, depending on what actually happens. If Cap is right in this, and all the document does is shift the blame onto them, from the people who did the bad things, then yeah, I'm in agreement with Cap. That's not good. Um, if the document just holds them to account for their responsibility, then yeah. Like, pretty much the entire second Avengers movie is the direct result of the Avengers. It's 100% their fault. Oh, yeah. It's, it's... Yeah, because Tony got too big for his riches. Yeah. Tony made Vision. Sorry, Tony did make Vision, but Tony also made Ultron. And as a result, Ultron wrecked a country and a half, depending on what you think, depending on how much damage was done to Wakanda. Um... He got lifted up in the air. No, no, that was that was <laughs> no, no, Sokovia. Sokovia got lifted up in the air, turned into a comet, so... Bad day for Sokovia. It's Chekovia, not Sokovia. Uh, Chekovia? Oh, bloody hell. Whatever. What was Sokovia? I thought it was... No, it was Chekovia. 
Either way. Whatever. Bad day for them. Bad day for them. So, but yeah. Uh, so. I, I'm team um, Tony on this. Only because you want an Iron Man suit. No, <laughs> I'm not Spider-Man, okay? That's our pause no, um... to, to sort of show that we really don't believe you. <laughs> I'm all capped. Speaking of Iron Man, did you hear Robert Downey Jr. is looking to move to Brisbane? No, I didn't. Yeah, I read that this morning. Don't know how true it is, but I read it this morning. It's on the internet, <laughs> so it's, it's on the internet, so it has to be true. But no, no it's in all seriousness, he says he's been to Brisbane a couple of times and he really loves it, so he's going to be moving here. Which would be awesome. Anyway, not the point. Moving right along. Um, I'm more Team Cap. Your Team Cap? This. See, to me, it's a really hard decision because we don't know enough about... What's going on. Yeah, we don't know enough about whose side's what. In the comics, the story was basically superheroes need to be registered so that we can keep an eye on them and make sure they're not doing too many shenanigans, make sure they're only used... Magneto. Yeah. Make sure they're only used in the old penultimate worst case scenario when the military can't handle it. Magneto. Um, <laughs> Magneto. Whereas in this, it seems similar sort of scenario based on what is said in that scene where they want to put a leash around the superhero, stop them acting unilaterally, almost like in Man of Steel, and tell them what they can and cannot interfere with and if the ultimate choice is the greater good two or three people die here versus 10,000 dying later then that's a really interesting sort of conundrum to go into but we also need to have our superheroes answer to somebody we can't have one guy just going around wrecking house Bats. Yeah. That's what I do. But, okay. It's also... If they're registered, there's no protection for their family. Exactly. That's, if, the, that's the downside. If someone breaks into the information vault, like one of their enemies breaks into their vault of Which information... In the comics happens all the goddamn time. After all, S.H.I.E.L.D. was fecking Hydra. Enough said. Yep. Yeah. Um... They're stuffed. Their families aren't safe. Exactly. and Even though most the... of them have... I'm pretty sure that's... Including Hawkeye. Yeah. Most of them have no family. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm sort of curious. I actually saw one of the guys at Nova dressed as Hawkeye, and he actually had a little Ant-Man on his arrow. <laughs> I was just like, you win. You win. I love the so many rays and Kylos. Yeah, that was quite a few. That was quite a few rays. Made me happy. Quite, quite, me a, quite a few Saitamas as well. <laughs> One of my friends was a Saitama. Lol. Like he actually like, and he didn't wear a bald cap. Like he was actually like he actually shaved for it. Wow, that's even more. I random. was like dedication. Oh yeah. So anyway, um, back to what other trailers dropped? Because there was quite a few of them. There was a, there was a Suicide Squad. Oh yeah, so Suicide that's, Squad one looks nice. That Suicide Squad, it's like one. really nice. Just, just yes. I, I'm sort like, of that was a really still... nicely cut, well done trailer. Yeah, I'm still scared about them going back and reshooting parts of Suicide Squad. Um, Why would they need to, to reshoot it, to make it less gritty? Because Suicide Squad, I, th the trailers they've been putting out make it seem not that serious. Like it's almost sort of Deadpool-esque. But the movie itself was better be almost as dark and gritty as Batman vs. Superman, which is stupendously misleading. And they sort of went, hmm, you know what, maybe we should add some more humor to this. So they're spending upwards of $50 million reshooting up to 30 minutes worth of the movie, if I remember correctly. But it's the Suicide Squad that's meant to be gritty. No, Suicide Squad is meant to be bizarre. It's not meant to be Batman. Like, Harley Quinn is meant to be quirky and funny. She, she is the DC Deadpool. 
She really is. Except not, except not as in indestructible. Oh yeah, obviously. But she's the same sort of poke fun at everything and laugh at all sorts of crazy shenanigans sort of character. Have we covered Rogue One yet? Cause... No. Oh. I, I wanted to save that for you. I take nice. oh, 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 that trailer is amazing. Yes. Have you heard people are crying that it's a prequel? <laughs> yep, fuck it. Oh my god, not a prequel. <laughs> Disney, amazing. what are you doing? Sure. Seriously, the fucking shot of the Star Destroyer, and then you see the back of the fucking Death Star getting built. Yeah. You see the dish Come going like, in. That is a fucking amazing shot. Oh, yeah. So it takes place... Um, it can't be soon after... That much after Episode 3, timeline-wise. No, no. Because in no, Episode no, no. 3, at That's... the very end, you see the Death Star there, and you did... I don't think it's got the dish yet. But you see it fairly heavily under construction at that point. Uh, no, it's actually supposedly meant to take place like a couple of years before episode 4. Yeah, well see, I heard it happened just before episode 4. Where they talk about all the, the, the Bothan spies that died to bring us this information. It's meant to be their movie. That's what I heard. Well, except the Bothans was, was the second Death Star. Yeah, it was. What yeah. was the first one? No, second one, because Mon Mothra said it, and then Admiral Akbar came to talk. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was Return of the Jedi. Yep, my bad. My bad. So, so we're probably going to get another young Leia? Oh, oh there's rumours of um, um, uh, Senator Bale is going to be in it. Senator Bale Organa. That works. And supposedly Vader's meant to be in it as well. Shock horror guys. I just... I just, I just want to see Vader on a battlefield just slicing and dicing um, rebels. Yeah, see, I don't want to see Vader on a battlefield gives, slicing and dicing. Just zero fucks. Just give zero fucks. If, he, if I saw Vader on the battlefield, I want to see him, lack of a better way, like, um, not a better descriptor, like in the, what was the, those games called? The Force Unleashed games, where he just walks forwards. And he doesn't run, he doesn't charge, he doesn't swing his lightsaber wildly. Oh, no, 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 I don't, he I just don't mean like that. He just casually walks like forwards and just yeah, sort no, of goes, no, like... ting, 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 ting. And every time he swings the lightsaber, someone dies. No, that's that's what I mean. Like, uh, uh, I don't mean like he, like running like a soldier. I just mean him like him being his badass self. Just, which is just like slowly walking up the battlefield and just massacring everyone. So, okay, let me just try and get this Star Wars timeline, the new timeline, in, in order. One, two, three. Rebels. Rogue Cl One. Uh, that, that, that. Cl uh, that, that. Stop. Clone Wars. Rebels. Oh, yeah. Clone Wars. One, two. Clone, Cl Clone Wars. Three. Rebels. Rebels. Rogue One. Rogue four. One. Four, five, six, seven. Yep. Okay, cool. There's uh, supposedly a rumor that um maybe that one of the characters from Rogue One might tie into season three of Rebels. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be that'd be a way to like bring the TVs into the movies again. Yeah. Well, they've already, they've done it a few times with but minor sort of crossovers. It'd be nice to have a series set about the same time as the Star Wars movies. Like the the current one, seven, eight, nine, and have it so it's almost like Agents of Shield, where it's the stuff that happens between the movies, with relatively minor well, we insignificant have the books. characters. I guess we have the books for that stuff. Oh, yeah, you yeah. got the books and the comics, but outside well, the of the is... most hardcore fans, well, who reads the books really? Well, supposedly, um, episode eight actually just meant to pick off straight, um, pick up straight away where episode seven finished. Like, there's no time lapse. That'd be cool. Because usually with the Star Wars films, there's always a time lapse but, um, in the actual universe between the movies, but this might be the first time that they don't do that. Fair enough. Okay. So, yeah. But yeah, that Rogue One trailer. Just damn. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh. I cannot. I can't wait for um, for Star Wars celebrations in July in London, because that's when we'll get the next one, and a little bit more for Episode Eight as well. Very nice. Very nice. So... Really looking forward to July for that. Have you seen that fan cut um, for the end of episode 7 
when Ray's handing Luke the Scott the the lightsaber, and it sort of flashes back and shows the lightsaber oh, yeah, that's story. Cool. Part, I think it's called Path of the Saber or something. Yeah. And yeah, that's really cool. Oh, did you see what our Mark Hamill did for Daisy Ridley's birthday? <laughs> Jumped on a back and had to carry him around, Star Wars, uh, Beauty yep. style. I saw yep. that and I was like, "What the <laughs> hell is going on?" I hope, I so swear to God, hope in in if we get a blooper reel for episode eight, they just have that scene and they're just running or running along on the island <laughs> like that. Sounds like a good way to break an ankle. I'll give her credit. I'll, I'll give her credit. She's a lot stronger than I thought she was because she held up. I was surprised she managed to hold up Mark. Yeah, that said, Mark isn't that big. Still, yeah. she's not that. She's not that big either. I know. So yeah. Anyway, I think it's about time we do the news. Yes, I know there was a lot of news. Because we've been ah, off la, la, for la, about la, la, la. two weeks. So. It's been a yeah, lots of news. Ooh, hang on, <laughs> hang on. I'll be right back. <laughs> really? He broke the news. I think his Star Wars just turned up. Five bucks. So, anyway. Oh, random note. This is just me and Amy chatting to, to fill the void. So, just screw to it. Um, I've been playing Ark. Mm. I tamed myself a 120 Moser kibble. And yeah. I've called it Battlestar. I've put a metal box the whole way around its body. Its head sticks out the front. It's got a metal box the whole way around its body, down as far down the tail as I can put it, and it's got six Plan X turrets on top, and a box which has two grills and a preserving bin to cook prime. I call it Battlestar because it sinks through the bottom of the ocean um, <laughs> and just just kills everything. I one hit a level sixty Moser by accident. Oops. So yeah, so oh look, the news guy's right. back. Let me guess, Star Sorry Wars about... turned up? No, not, not yet. Ah, oh, sad face. I wish, I wish. Yeah, he'd be like, oh, by the way, Star Wars, you buy, click, Let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> buy, have a great time. Let's <laughs> do it. You still got news to go. Let's do it. Oh, so, yeah, uh, so yeah, let's get st- uh, st- uh, stuck into this news because there's a lot to go through. Um, so, uh, Ant-Man is, uh, gonna go quick, briefly back to Civil War. Um, Ant-Man is, um, there was a clip that was released from, um, Jimmy Kimmel Live with Ant-Man being the Avengers. Nice. Specifically, Team Cap. Supposedly, of... supposedly he was drugged. Who drugged him? They drugged, okay. they drugged Ant-Man to, and kidnapped him. Really? Yep, that is yeah. hilarious. I wouldn't put it past them. I wouldn't put it past Fury. Oh. No, no, it was Hawkeye that Haw- did it. No. Yeah, Hawkeye. Well, not much better though, if you think about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's move on to uh, we'll move on to some Wolver- Wolverine three news. And uh, Wolverine three will be set in the future. Of the in the uh, of the X Men movie timeline, so this is I don't know how far along this is going to be. But this might be more like Patrick Stewart timeline, Professor Xavier. Yeah, I think it'll probably be more if it's set in the future and it's based on the old old man Wolverine storyline. It might which even it's be supposedly, which it's, it's supposedly meant to. Yeah, which would then, be great. Oh yeah, it'd be great. It, then it might be a hundred plus years in the future. Oh, did you see the thing that popped up on? Facebook wall going that Loki's not doing any more Lokis. I don't think. Th- I'm pretty sure. Like, I don't think that's real. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Loki's in Ragnarok. Yeah. Yeah, the outcry for that was funny. Well, last we saw Loki, he was Odin, so. Damn it, they only pulled that one off. Because he's Loki and he can. <laughs> so yeah, um, moving along. Uh, uh, Underworld. 
surprisingly, we finally have a title for the fifth and final Underworld movie. Oh god, that's it's still cool. going? Yes. Uh... So yeah, the, the, the um, Underworld 5 is to be titled Blood Wars. I actually kind of like the name. No, it's not bad. Could be worse. It's... Did you? Oh, have you heard the domain? Um, the domain names that um, Sony put up for the standalone Spider-Man film. No oh, god. So there's a uh, Spider-Man Homecoming dot com. All these are horrendous, by the way. I hope none of these come true. There's like Spider-Man the beginning. Like it's just like absolutely horrendous names. I hope none of them are real. Is that it? Just two? Oh, there's a third, but I can't remember the third one. I don't really care, because they're all bad. <laughs> Spider-Man! With bug spray. Oh, I've got some Star Wars news! Uh, the MTV Movie Awards were on over the weekend. Oh yeah, which is where we got all of these trailers. Yes. And Star Wars got three awards. It got our best film for in 2015, uh, Daisy Ridley won Breakthrough Performance, and Adam Driver won Best Villain. Nice. Screw you, Oscars! Oh, yeah. It was actually cool. Um, So, uh, to accept the uh, Best Film um, Award, th- they recreated a, um, a deconstructed um, Millennium Falcon Hall for um, Daisy Ridley and J.J. Abrams to walk through. Nice. I thought so, someone yeah. had way too much time on their hands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, keeping on Star Wars news, and I really annoy for uh, at America for this. Uh, the original trilogy of Star Wars is going to return to the, the- to um, theaters in the U.S. In, s- in their summer. So for so, New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi are going to be back on the big screen. Damn you! Is it the original original big screen version that originally 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 aired? Or is it the new penultimate Blu-ray added in? No, oh no, they've got reboot in my in my originals version. Doesn't say. Just says the they call it the return of the trilogy. Oh god. So I'm not sure. There. Anyway. Okay. No. No. Confirmed. Uh. uh they are the 1997 re-release. So. Bath. Yeah, I know. We'll love the original theatricals. Exactly. It would have been amazing to go watch those on the big screen one more time. Exactly. Make sure that Han definitely shot first. <laughs> uh, what else? We'll move on to Flash and Arrow. And there's a lot happening in there as well. Oh, yeah. As we said, um, Flash... Uh, Flashes back this week with um, with the Zoom episode. So happy that is back and stop taking breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Seriously, DC. It's, getting, it, 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 it's Ser- actually getting really frustrating and annoying at this point. Yeah. DC, seriously, you do the TV shows well. For the love of God. Stop break. If you're going to have this many fucking breaks, start the season a little bit later. ready for it and not... So yeah, the episode is titled Versus Zoom. Nice. So yeah, that would be on today. So we get that today. Uh, this is cool. Uh, Constantine. I've got some Constantine news. Uh, Constantine Season 1 is available for sale uh, for digital sale again. Nice. I figured the Arrow so, crossover would definitely boost its appeal and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Hurry up, CW! Please hurry up and pick it up and give us season two. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Arrow, um, Arrow's season four finale is currently filming. Really? So they're current. Yep, the season finale is currently um getting filmed. Still, like, do they have? But then if they don't even, and then but. Okay, to put this in perspective, so that everyone understands why I'm so upset. Most normal TV shows film, and then for the next four or five months, it's editing, post-production, stuff like that. 
They don't film the fucking thing three or four weeks before it's meant to air. Well, the finale doesn't air until 25th of May, so they've got a month. About a, month, about a couple, about eight odd weeks. Still. It's not the point. I re- uh, well, this happened last year. Um, I remember the story. Um, Willa Holland was actually meant to be a Gold Coast supernova. And they had to bail because actually, of it. She had to bail because they were um, refilming. Yeah. So this isn't this isn't uncommon for them to do that. Yeah. Anyway. Keeping on Arrow as well, uh, supposedly the death isn't the only shock we're going to get for the rest of the season. There's apparently a lot more shocks planned. Let's just do sort of need to. Arrow has been, lack of a better word, getting blander recently. Yeah, it needs something to reboot, to revitalize. Yeah. Like, kill the arrow. Oh, no, chop his arm off. Well, I guess that is canon. We've seen it in the future. It may be a deleted timeline now, but we've seen it. You know, eh. you, know you want to. <laughs> you know. So, um, so uh, uh, this is a cool little thing. What happens when Superman, Cyborg, and Aquaman walk into a bar? Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, a a, fic- a picture happens. That happens. So um uh, so uh, Henry Cavill, Ray Fisher, and Jason Momoa are actually actually um out having drinks together, and they uh, um took a picture. Yeah. So the, then, so the ca- and the caption of the picture was, "What happens when Superman, <laughs> Aquaman, and Cyborg walk into a bar and they just leave it at that?" Oh, well, t- you can't give me a setup for a punchline and then say it's a picture in an audio podcast. That's not how it works. We've done 78 <laughs> of these. We should be better than this by now. Give me a punchline. You have exactly two seconds. Go. Rusted metal? God damn it. What? Aquaman and Cyborg. Rusted metal. Uh... Well. It's, uh, it's just, just, you're fired. Just, you're fired. It's, 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 you're done. You're done. Go away. <laughs> been a while since I've fired uh, you. It's long overdue. <laughs> and the reason I haven't fired you recently is because we I do need at least three people on this thing to keep it close to interesting. <laughs> Alright, uh, moving along to uh, The Rock, surprisingly. And um, during the MTV... Sorry. Geodude? That's Andy Circus. It's The Rock is Geodude? Or is he Graveler now? <laughs> I'm not sure. Sorry, just referencing Team Four Star. No, I know, I know. You got the, I got the Pokemon puns. Don't worry. Yeah, no, it, 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 Team Four Star is caught a, is doing a Leaf Green Nuzlocke, and they caught a Geodude and called it um, the Rock. Yeah. yeah. So, I love watching those guys. Um, so funny. Anyway, um, yeah. Hashtag so uh, during the MTV. <laughs> yep. Uh, so during the MTV Movie Awards, uh, Dwayne Johnson actually uh, was wearing a shirt with the Black Adam um, symbol on it. Ah. Because he's because he's already confirmed for Black Adam in the Shazam movie. Fair enough. We just don't know who his. We just don't know who Captain. Ma- um, well, I was still calling Captain Marvel, but Shazam yeah. is yet. Shazam. That just sounds wrong. I do love that. Uh, I do love that word. I don't. Shazam. It sounds just wrong in every conceivable way. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this week's podcast. We have a bit over a minute left, so want to recap. If you guys want to check out some really cool sci-fi battles, check out facebook.com slash the deadliest fandom. That's right, we changed the name. Um, that's the name we're going with from now on. I still hate it. I prefer sci-fi wars, but yeah, but you can, you beggars can't be choosers. Um, we're going to be we doing... We're going to be doing... Comic-Con? Th- we'll get there. We're going to do three battles a week. And a ship spec at the on every weekend from now on for as long as oh. I can keep up that pace, which is probably not long. Um, so yeah, so Amanda Tapping is going to Oz Comic Con Brisbane, hopefully. Hopefully she doesn't bail this time because yeah. of work commitments. Please, please don't bail, Amanda. We love you. We want you here. So that's it for this week. Catch you later. Bye, Bye everyone.
Facebook.com slash Save Sci Fi, Facebook.com slash Save Sci Fi Podcast, Facebook.com slash Garrison7. Make sure you check out this podcast where all podcasts live on Stitcher and on iTunes and on YouTube, which I don't know the YouTube account. I guess YouTube.com slash Save Sci Fi. Not sure. But they'll be up there. So, catch you later. Ah, I managed to get it all out. I managed to get it all out. I managed to get it all out.